Another hello this evening from me, Yeah, Alpha. Um, yeah, just in case you're wondering why I'm making another video, uh, is um, uh, well, I've, I'm just currently uploading the one on um, German accents, which uh, takes a while for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so I'm just decided. I've just decided to fill in the little free time with um, making another video. Uh, this time, I'm going to talk about um, a book that's grabbed my attention a couple of. Uh, months ago already, um, which I'm already into reading. Um, it's called the, called the German Genius by Peter Watson, a British historian. Um, yeah, why I'm interested in this is because um, I'm German, you know, uh, and um, the, the title of the book reads, uh, the subtitle of the book reads, um, Europe's Third Renaissance and the Second Scientific Revolution and the 20th Century. Um, yeah, for some reason, um, this man is um, keen on talking about or writing about um, the, the reasons why uh, Germany has profoundly shaped modern thinking, or not Germany, but Germans have shaped modern thinking. Um, yeah, the, the, um, what's caught my eye with this book is the critiques. Yeah, the Sunday Times wrote, um, which is it's on the title, A breathtaking panorama, and the Financial Times equally wrote uh, a compelling epic tale. Um, as you can imagine, uh, this book is quite nice to read. I mean, um, of course, Britons have a very lively style of, uh, of talking and writing. Uh, they're always very humorous. Humorous something they like to um, talk. They like to say that Germans are. Um, uh, like just simply like that uh, feature. Um, yeah, um, I think just to give you a, a kind of a glimpse of, of what um, this book is actually like, I, I think I'd um, read the back to you. The stuff on the back. Um, yeah, let's, let's start then. Uh, Peter Watson's magisterial sweep through modern German thought and culture confounds the stereotypes that the world has of Germany and Germany has of itself. From the end of the Baroque age to the rise of Hitler in 19, 1933, Germany was transformed from a poor relation among Western nations into the dominant intellectual and cultural force in the Western world. In the early decades of the 20th century, German artists, writers, scholars, philosophers, scientists and engineers were leading the country to new heights, and by 1933 Germany had won more Nobel Prizes than any other nation, including Britain and America, put together. How did the Germans transform their country so as to achieve such preeminence? In this absorbing cultural and intellectual history, Peter Watson explores the, the historical origins of the German genius and convictingly demonstrates that it was German thinking, from Beethoven and Kant to Diesel and Nietzsche, from Goethe and Wagner to Mendel and Planck, from Hegel and Marx to Freud and Schoenberg, that has done more than anything else to create the modern West. Uh, yeah, so you see... Um, the, the, the research that Peter Watson did is quite uh, profound, pretty astounding. Because uh, the more I'm, the more I'm reading into this book, uh, the, the more I get um, surprised by um, just how, just how important the cultural history of my country is. Because you see, um, well, you you all know this is story, the, the history of Germany is. A, those dark 12 years from 1933 to 1945, uh, not much else to talk about. Um, it's a topic that's been uh, eagerly dis already been eagerly discussed in the past. Um, yeah, kind of the, there's a sense that there is a, a break in between these two the, these two dates, 1945 and 1933, um, just because of uh, just because because the the fascist regime, the Nazi regime back then, kind of, um, yeah, in, in its aim to uh, bring the Germans to newer heights, just failed and uh, broke the whole thing down. Just broke the whole thing down because, in, in I mean, 
it doesn't need a rocket scientist to figure out that when a country tries to exterminate its, uh, when a society tries to exterminate its intellectual elite, which the Jews back then were, they were leading scientists, uh, intellectuals, um, writers, scholars, whatever, it, that just isn't going to work. Um, yeah, and I sense that somehow my country still hasn't quite recovered from uh, this um, from this stand, I, I might, might uh, call it, uh, that was, it was, um, it, it had in that time. Um, of course, nowadays, you can read a lot about uh, how Berlin is catching up as the city it once was before the war. Uh, as a, a big cultural hub in, in uh, Central Europe, or Europe uh, as a whole, next to London and Paris, or maybe even better than London and Paris, j just because um, uh, the scene is somewhat livelier, livelier than uh, in those two cities, and most of all because it's much better suited to young people, it's much cheaper than London and Paris, uh, nowadays at least, um, still. Well, so, um, um, yeah, so the more I read into this book by Peter Watson, the more I just would, would wish that um, Germany would once again catch up with uh, the cultural achievements it had already achieved in uh, the, the, the early 19th century, the 20th century, uh, because now it's 2012, and uh, we, in 10 years, it's kind of then the time when uh, the Weimar Republic uh, grows on years old passes the barrier of a 100-year anniversary. And well, politically, the Weimar Republic wasn't quite that of a good that good of a time, but culturally and scientifically, it was just a state of the art, and still it is until today. Uh, and I'm not joking. I mean, look at um, look at architecture. Modern architecture, the way we see it constructed every day in uh, all around the world or even the skyscrapers in New York they are or their style is in, in most part um, goes back to works of German architects like uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe or Walter Gropius um, and so forth just marvelous uh, Marvelous scholars, marvelous um, artists, or in intellectuals, or scientists, even. I mean, kind of all the, of that Bauhaus vibe that's still going on in architecture has a kind of a, a scientific flair to it. Uh, all those clear lines, and it's just reduced to the minimum. I mean, it's uber aesthetic, and just. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still the last word to say in, in terms of architecture. Just as an example, oh, look at Hollywood. Look at today's Hollywood. Hollywood is uh, was profoundly shaped the way it is today by um, German directors, uh, mostly Jewish German directors who fled the country in, uh, in the time when, when the Nazis kind of picked up pace. Um, men like um, Fritz Lang, Siegfried Krakauer, just to name two. So uh, modern day Hollywood wouldn't be the way it is today if it hadn't been for uh, German immigrants to the United States. Who would have known that? I mean, <laughs> I just can't imagine this. It's unbelievable. I, I mean, uh, yeah, just all, all the time. As a German, I sit there. I've sat there and, and wondered why um, my country seems to have so little influence on the world. But in, in in essence, it's not little influence. It's just um, little outspoken influence. The influence is kind of more, more silent, simply because it's um, quite some time ago. It was quite some time ago. And so um, yeah, in in essence, what I would like to say to anyone who's interested in German, or in German language, in Germany as a country, as a society, um, I really, really invite you to come here and just kind of explore this whole vibe. 
uh, and get to the roots of, of, of uh, our cultural history. I mean, I've, I've met many people who say, or even in people who live here, um, immigrants of, of second generation or third generation, uh, who said to me, "Yeah, um, I mean, we're, we're not feeling like integrating to German society or German culture simply because we don't think Germany has a culture." Well, um, yeah. This video or this book by Peter Watson is my answer to you, these people. Um, yeah, so mm, I think that's it. And let, I just let my country speak for itself. Um, yeah, goodbye, or should I say in German, Auf Wiedersehen.